Hi, Rolf. Welcome. Mm -hmm. um, in 2011, you were one of uh, the speakers at TEDx Delft. Yeah. Uh, Simone de Jong. Well, actually, we did two projects that I think got her attention. One of the projects was where we uh, build our own uh, low-tech rain game, and we, because we want to have it as low cost as possible, um, and for that we went to consumer electronics. But we did need to tinker a lot to make that work. And the other thing we did um, was that I organized for the students in our honors track program a uh, event. A scrap heap challenge show and build a um, apparatus from this that can measure wind in uh, in at least three speeds. Between Simona and I, we went back and forth a few times, and, and we ended up with with what I think became a very strong core for for that talk. I think that that every good talk should be a story um, mm -hmm. to a degree. Um, I think lectures should take note. But um, and and I knew the story. It was just collecting the background material, the imagery uh, to present with that, the onstage props to present with that, and then trim it down. Uh, the, the concept of a TED talk forces you to uh, make choices in what you're going to say. You have a limited amount of time, and um, every, everything you say needs to be spot on, I believe. Uh, for your message to come across. Um, I had a few feedback moments uh, with, with with Simona and with some other people from the organization um, where I said, well, I want to go and try to do this, I want to go this line within my story, uh, would that work, wouldn't that work, how would it work on stage? Uh, I got very constructive feedback from that. I mean, the story was mine um, and I, th I, I usually try to focus uh, and keep it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but you should be open to so you're open to feedback from people that know stagecraft and stuff like that. Uh, when I when I give a story, usually it's in front of a classroom, in front of a conference audience um, for a scientific conference, which is a completely different setting. So I got a lot of good pointers from the organization that, that helped me in um, yeah in delivering. Uh, the way that we did, and I was very pleased with the result. Yeah, I was kind of nervous delivering my speech. Um, yeah, I think you can hear my my voice waver once or twice, which is actually when I um, I was in the flow of my speech, mm -hmm. and then at some point I think I looked up and I realized that's 900 people, <laughs> and you have to know it. But then then there's a small waver in my voice, and then I get back on track uh, because it's actually quite energizing. For me, the best thing about it were the reactions after that. Uh, okay. People coming back to you saying, I really like this talk. It inspired me to do something myself. Mm -hmm. um, I got a few invitations to, to give similar talks um, at, uh, at other uh, venues so that I could well, spread this message even more. Uh, practice, practice early. Um, and and be, uh, be aware that well, be open to feedback from people that are professionals in their fields. You are going to be a professional on your context, on your, on your content. Your, stories, your story is yours to tell. But a stage director knows how to convey that message to an audience. And a lightning guy knows how to make sure that whatever you're presenting or having your hands or where looks good. Um, so, so take their advice at heart and um, that also means make sure that you're done with your talk a week before the final date and then allow changes to happen based on their pointers until the final moment. And that, that's going to be hard because it means being flexible. I mean, you, you, you could have prepared your, your text almost completely and then they say, well, this or that won't work. And that's a hard message to, to accept, but um, I found out that in the end, taking those those pointers at heart really improved my uh, six minutes and 40 seconds. I consider it a great honor to be asked to be a speaker, um, but I think it's important to realize that the moment you become a speaker, you also become a co-organizer. You're actually working together with an entire team so you also kind of, when you accept to speak, you also kind of accept the responsibility to make it a success.